leaders, you're getting ready to start week one. So I wanna go over with you some things to keep in mind as you step into week one. First of all, remember this is the first week that you are asking your disciples to follow you into the introductory of the valor season. So just encourage them, pray, pray, pray before you go in, pray over them. And just ask God to stir an excitement within them that they are about to see God do amazing things in their life, like an expectancy. So pray for that. Uh, again, you may want to go back over or for the first time if you haven't, encourage them to understand your vision for the season, your vision scripture for the season. Um, if you hand out the... Um, journals this week that might be something for them to write down the 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 year vision scripture on the journal maybe write in their own words what they think that means um so making sure again keeping the end in mind everybody knows the direction this week is going to be really key because people do better if they know what's expected of them so you want to be very clear this week that clear of the expectations that people know what's expected of them during the season they're better able to say yes i can do this or we're going to walk together with this but this is what's going to be expected so that's what what week one is all about it's about understanding what they're getting into and then also the understanding of accountability and so those are the things that you really want to make sure that everyone knows this week this week is a great week to pass out the, the curriculum to everyone. They're going to need that. You're going to go over what's in the curriculum together. You're also going to assign a very small um, homework assignment this week or something for them to be doing at home this week. So if you have your books handy, you might want to grab those and look at those and see what you're going to be doing. You're going to find that in this week one, Getting Discipleship Started, you have a large group activity section and you have a Getting Started and then you have a piece that you're going to go over with your participants. And then you are going to have the discipleship agreement is in there. The Bible reading plan, if you're choosing to use that Bible reading plan, it's in there. And then you have week one homework. So those are the things that you're going to look at with your participants this week. Each week you'll have a large group and then later you'll have a small group. And that will be if you have more than four or five people in your group, you want to break into small groups. And so, but this week you're going to keep everybody together. You're going to make sure everybody has a book so they can follow along with you as you go over the discipleship um, agreement with them. So the getting started, the first thing you want to do, if you did not last week do some kind of mixer, you'll for sure want to do that. If you did a mixer last week, you might want to start out with something really simple again. They may not have gotten to... Um, visit with everybody or see everybody in the group or maybe you have new people coming in so you want to again start with that level of comfortability where they feel like they're where they're supposed to be and that they're part of a group and you're all going to do this together they're not alone and so do some kind of mixer there is an example in here in the book of how you can have questions on a card and go and they can visit with other people in the room so that's something that you can do also reintroduce your mentors you're going to continue to introduce those mentors if you have more than five six or seven people in your group you're going to be dividing them into small groups and they're going to be led by a mentor facilitator and so you want to reintroduce those those people as well you're not breaking into small groups yet you're again just introducing your leadership that way if people feel uncomfortable or they're not sure what's going on you've introduced people other than yourself that they can go to and they can ask questions too all right, then a big key in this is accountability. People want to grow in their relationship with the Lord. Many of them have done it on their own, and now you're asking them to step into a discipleship process where they're going to be accountable to others. Accountability can have a negative connotation, so you want to make sure that they understand accountability means we're doing this together, and we want to keep each other um, focused on the truth. We love each other enough that we're not going to leave anybody behind, and that's where you want to read the scripture together, Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10. It's in your book there. 
and how it two really are better than one. That you have somebody there to help pick you up, you have people there to encourage you. So accountability should at this point be introduced as something very positive. This is going to help in your in your um growing process. This part of the journey of being able to walk with others, they're going to see amazing things in that. So having an understanding and accountability, and this is going to be really important to form that foundation because later on when someone's having a hard time and struggling, maybe it's early and people don't know each other really well yet, you go back to you love them enough that you don't want anybody to get behind the beginning. You want to keep everybody on track and encouraging everybody. People are going to learn at different um, um rates they're going to um maybe some you'll have people on different places in their spiritual journey you may have some people who have who are strong mature believers and they're growing but you may have some people who don't even know jesus yet don't have a relationship with him yet they're just stepping up to the starting line but no matter what we still link arms and do this journey together so accountability is going to be really important the other thing is you have the discipleship agreement in here the reason this is in here is not for legalism, but it's so that everybody, it's in black and white. Everybody knows what's expected. So this is really important for you as a leader that you're saying yes to this discipleship agreement and that those um, mentors or those co-leaders that you have understand what's expected of them. This just gives a baseline so everybody's on the same page. So go over that with them. The number one thing on there is attendance. So I would just really encourage you to, again, keep the end in mind. You want to help people grow and you're walking with them in this, but you also, people need to be there. There to grow. The dynamics of your group changes every time somebody's gone. And so attendance and being there on time is really important. And you want to encourage them and tell them why that's so important. All right. The prayer piece, the whole time you're going to be praying for each other. Your spiritual growth is dependent on praying for one another. Um, you also are going to encourage them that this is the curriculum that you're using. And so you want to make sure that everybody knows that and sticks with the curriculum. You're serving others. You're praying for each other. You're coming under the covering of your leader. Those are super important. You want to ask them, you've asked them to buy their curriculum and their materials. So you want to make sure that they understand what's expected of them. If they didn't pay, pay up front and you're letting them pay payments, help them understand that. Again, it's not about the money, but it is about the skin in the game, that they've said yes to buying materials and being a part of what God is going to do. This is really important because it is a long journey, so you want people to stay with it and understand what they're doing. Um, the communication is really, really important that you're communicating with, with them and they're communicating with you. You want to set up ways for them to have relationships with other people and then also just um, the responsibility of linking arms and walking this journey together. So those are the big pieces. Also, this week you're going to start the Bible reading um, plan. So it's in the book here. You can use the U version. If you decide to do that, you may be doing a different disciples reading Bible reading plan, but you want to make sure that everybody knows what it is when it starts and to start setting up a daily habit of reading the Bible every day. The last thing you're going to do with them is you're going to share homework with them. And so this week, really basic. There's only a couple of things they're going to do before you gather next week, but you're starting to get them in the habit of doing something at home each week between meetings. This week, they're going to read over the Ecclesiastic scripture about accountability. They're also going to read and pray over the discipleship agreement and sign it and bring it back next week. So those are the big things that you're going to do this week. I'm praying for you. I know that week one is going to be amazing.